Hello, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Happy Monday. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take me to upload this video, but I hope it goes up today. <laughs> I've done three. There's three on my camera, so um, I'll likely put this one up first. Um, so I've been having a play oh, um, with Angela's freebie from fans of Angela Kerr Designs. Did I ask how you are? I hope you're all doing well. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Cheryl, and I love to craft, especially with freebies. So um, I'm going to use only what the freebie comes with and accept, you know, maybe for a few little words here and there. Um, let me just get my glue stick because I wanted to put this here before I turned on the camera and I forgot. So let me just do this on a piece of scrap paper because it's really yucky. I don't like this glue at all. Look, it's terrible. But they were out of my brand, which is the Scotch Permanent. Okay, this is Scotch Permanent. Same thing, okay? 3M, the whole thing, everything's the same. This never gets all sticky like that. Never. But they were, it's so hard to find. Every time I was on a uh, rotating, you know, did send me two every three months, and it was perfect. Um, but then they, stop sending it Amazon and then my friend Celeste from Woodland Inspired found it I think at Hobby Lobby and I thought oh my gosh they still are making it why isn't Amazon carrying it but then finally I saw it on Amazon so I ordered four <laughs> but I need to use these up first so that's frustrating anyway that's my issue, not yours. <laughs> I just wanted to show you what I was doing because every single time I use it, I have to get a lot of the gummy off because otherwise I get it all over my hands, which are already um, a little bit inky because I used some vellum in one of the pockets I made using this freebie. Somebody needs to stop me because I have been working with this for the past hour and thought I'm going to turn on the camera and make one more <laughs> because I was going to just show it on um you know show what I had made Angela made several different kinds yesterday than I made and um I just couldn't wait I was actually having my lunch it was about 3 30 our time eastern standard time she is obviously uh, over in Europe in England and um, so I watched her video and as soon as she showed the freebie I thought okay I'll finish my lunch <laughs> and um, then I'll go download it and print it no I didn't wait <laughs> as soon as she started making something or showing what she had made I, I don't even remember I just took my lunch and multitasked and I downloaded it and I printed it and so, um, yeah, so I've been playing with it. So let me show you what is in this freebie before I show you what I've created. And then we're going to make a different, I'll show you how these two were created very quickly. And then we're going to create something different from these two. Okay, so put these over here for now, get them out of the way. So, she gives you this sheet, which is, oh my goodness, is that not gorgeous? I could make a gazillion things with just this page. I mean, I have so many ideas. So, she gives you this page, and then she gives you this page here, and then she gives you this page. So, if you are not on Facebook... No worries, because she's coming out with a new kit, uh, the mini kit. I 
think tomorrow, Tuesday, because that's usually, that's her video day. Uh, she videos Sunday, Tuesday, uh, oh gosh, Friday, does she video Saturday? I don't even, I think she's videoing four days a week now. She could be videoing five. I don't know. I don't know how she does it. It doesn't matter. Um, but anyway, this was Sunday's video. Tuesday, she's coming out with the mini down the garden path kit. And that's what this is. But this is a freebie. So I've been playing with it. Um, and I love it very, very much. I'm so happy with it. So let me show you what I've done so far. And then I'll show you how I made these. They're two different ones. This one's vellum and this one's paper. However, the contents are only from this sheet and this sheet. Okay, so what you see in these is just from these two sheets. However, I did print this sheet twice. Once on vellum, once on paper. One is double-sided, the other one, the vellum, obviously not. Okay, so let me just throw that gooey glue patch scrap away. I have to literally keep scraps of paper beside me so that I can use this glue, which is so silly. Don't buy it. <laughs> well, it's up to you. You might not have the same problem. It might be because of Florida. I don't know. So what have I made? We'll start with the paper one, and then I'll show you how I constructed this. Okay. So um, what we have, I this Dear to Dream is just from my typewritten words. Um, I just type on some vintage typing paper with my typewriter and um, I just keep them in strips in typically this little bag here, but I have them over to the side, so. So other than this Dear to Dream and Believe, everything else is from Angela's kit, except for some scraps. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you those in a moment. So um, anyway, here are the pieces. Uh-oh. What happened to my little... Oh, it's over here. So sorry. I was... Is it? Where is it? Oh, no. Well... Did it go too far in? Maybe. Nope. Oh no. How did I lose that? That is so ridiculous. Uh -uh. I didn't lose it. It's right here. So sorry. Okay, so there's a pocket here. And I put this... A uh, little gingham ribbon from the uh, ribbon bundle, which is right here. I I got the ultimate bundle, and you can go back a couple of videos and see that if you'd like, and see how I store it, okay? So that I have it, you know, all organized because it can I can get out of hand with it if I don't keep it organized. So, um, in any event. I used a small piece of the gingham uh, satin ribbon and just used the tiny attacher. I did put it on the bottom because I tried it on the top. And every time I went to staple it, I said, no, I, I just don't like it on the top. So I put it there. So when you pull it out, it's like this. Okay, so that goes inside here. Somehow. I don't know why that was out. So that just tucks in there, okay? This data dream was just one of my typewritten, you know, for my typewriter. And then you get this piece and this piece. Put this over here. And then I have this here, okay? So I have a pocket here. I have, oops, a pocket here and a pocket here and a pocket here 
And then inside this pocket, I have, I'll show you how I constructed that in a moment. So all this here fits inside this envelope. Is that all that's in there? Just making sure. Here, here, here. I know I had some extra pieces. Um, I ended up putting them someplace, it doesn't matter. So these are, like I said, this is everything that you will see for the pieces came from those two sheets. So I didn't print those twice to fill the pockets. So for this one, I just folded it in half instead of the, you know, making two tags, I folded it in half and I made this little sort of belly band type thing and sewed a button so that it, you know, can keep it closed. And then you open it up and I put this here and this little piece here. Okay, so that's that. Now that is from another piece of paper. Okay, that is because I had printed it another time. But that's about the only piece that is in here that I printed, that I added. So there's that. And that slides right back in here. Okay. So then um, I had some of this um, cardstock right beside me in my little trash bin that I had from a different kit. I mean, a different uh, journal that I was working on. So I just took it and as you can see right here, instead of folding it back, I tore it. So if you can imagine that, okay? So instead of wasting it by folding it in back, and gluing it down, I just took my ruler and I tore it off because I didn't want to waste that. I just thought it was so pretty. I didn't know where I was going to put it, but I ended up making this little matchbook um, to go inside for some writing. So I'm going to start putting these things back in so I don't get confused. Okay, so this goes back in here inside this pocket. And I love this house, so I really like that piece. Actually, I think this goes here because I do love seeing this house. Maybe not. Uh, let's see. Why is that? No, it goes here. I guess. Yes. So that goes there. And then this goes in here. This goes in here. Because if I take all the pieces out, I'm going to get really confused as to what goes where. <laughs> Which doesn't really matter. And then this goes here. And then this little matchbook, um, I put them back in the wrong place. This actually goes inside this little piece that I put on top of this little matchbook. And I put Imagine over the staple. And you open it up, and I've made these before on video. And then I put this card on with um, some corner, uh, photo corners, because I wanted to be able to take it out um, and, you know, write a note or, you know, a secret thought or whatever. Okay, so that goes inside there. And it's just the... I've made these several times on video. I would make it again if you would like. Um, just leave me a message in the comment and I will do that, but it's very simple. Um, it's self-explanatory as I show you actually. So here is some scraps that I had in my stash. So I did use, you know, some scraps in my stash. Um, and they're just, you know, these little papers here that I got in a kit that I had done a review on, okay, um, a while ago. 
and it says I just had those bloom and grow so I put those there I thought that was kind of appropriate and then this band is just you know probably a half inch I cut from a scrap okay this is eight and a half inches long I cut it from a cut this from a, that scrap over there and then I wrapped it around and I glued it okay and then I took this scrap from my stash and made a little up tuck okay so there's this in there and then there's this the little scrap that I just didn't want to throw away and I just thought it was just too pretty to throw away isn't that pretty it's just too pretty to throw away and so you know it's a good writing spot and this goes in here like so and I did not ink it because I just I did try to ink it and I didn't really like it I think I might have been a little heavy-handed um, and my ink was very very juicy it is uh, seedless preserves seedless preserves is what I used which when you look at the kit and you before you cut out the pieces you can kind of see pretty much the same color so that's why I went with this color but I did not want to take away from this watercolor wash that she um, has layered in the background because I just thought it was too pretty so I did not ink that part of the white I, I just love it the way it is so like I said um, I didn't really ink a lot of the pieces because I, you know, I just, I didn't want to take away from it. Although, you know, that does look very pretty. You can sew around these. Um, there's some that I may add some little, um, French knots here and there. Um, I just haven't done that yet, but... You may see one or two. <laughs> so this, okay, so now, oh, so this up tucks right in here. Okay, and then this I just sewed across so that the person or myself can just tear the sheets off, add them to your journal or, um, you know, as a little shopping list or what have you. Um, and then when you're all done with it, you can replace it with another pad. Okay. So I stitch because I, you know, you can easily tear it by just folding up this and then tearing it off. Okay. And then you'll have your next piece, your next piece, your next piece, but you could staple it for sure. Or you could glue each page at the top together to have all your pages. All right. all right, and you can most certainly glue it here. You don't have to go through, you know, with the band and all of that. And then this just simply tucks back inside this little piece right here. And as you can see, I left a tiny little um, edge here. Um, I didn't even use my scoreboard. It's just I wanted it to look like more of an authentic matchbook. And that's why it's like that. So that's what I did for that. And that just slides back in here with this cutie, which I love. Oh my goodness, I love this so much. I just, aren't they beautiful? They're just the most gorgeous floral purple images in the world. <laughs> that I can't stop thinking about Peggy. Peggy, if you're watching, I can't stop thinking about you. So that goes inside here. And that's the first pocket, which is different from this pocket. This pocket, I have the pullout on this side. And this is out of vellum, which is why my hands are a little inky because I folded it before it was dry. You really do need your vellum to dry. And I took it out of the printer. I cut off the white and folded it. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, this pulls out here and then I have these sweet little stamps here 
which this is just a scrap from the paper. You know, this, this is the paper that I used, same backing, except this is on vellum and this is not, okay? This is actually on linen paper, uh, Swarthmore linen paper, and it's 24 pound. So, um, yeah, so this is vellum. So I put a little believe here, and I did put a little strip of paper here only because I wanted to put the stamps in. I wanted to have some place to put the stamps. So then these all come out. These are all from the same pages, okay? Now, this is from another extra page that I had. Um, because I cover when I folded this up with the paper for the vellum it doesn't matter you can't really tell that it's upside down on the paper it really doesn't matter um, but I liked it better with it going the right way so I did cut you know another sheet of this right here and, but so I had all this left over. So what I did was um, for this one, it's got the notepad with the matchbox and it's got this little piece and what have you. So for this one, I just did some stationery. Um, so I didn't want to cut it because it was just too pretty. And then I had these two pieces left over. So you could make journaling cards or you could have it be stationary. Like I said, this is on linen paper, so it's really nice to write on, but they would make great journaling cards, okay? And so I just added those right back here, like so, and I just pulled them up so that if you did see the other side for any reason, then, um, that would be okay. So now this one has a pocket here at the top. Oh, I'm probably confusing you, but I'm sorry. So this one has a pocket at the top. So that's where that stationery goes, okay? Where the other one does not have a pocket at the top. And I'll show you how to make both. They're very simple. Okay, so then that goes in there. And then uh, I know the house goes in here because I love to see it. Oh, so gorgeous. Typical cottage uh, garden in England. And then we'll put this one here. And see if you do happen to see the back. And just pull this up like this and it looks fine. Okay. Or like I said, you could make a journaling card out of it. And let's see, then we have two pockets here. So we have this one that you can kind of see through. I don't know if the light is showing that because of the vellum. And then behind it, we'll add this one because there's a second pocket behind there but I do want it peeking up. And then we have this one, which is different from the one in front of it. Actually, I think what I'll do is add this to this back pocket, perhaps, and then add this to split it up. And then this goes in this side. So I have one going in one side and one going in the other side. And you can choose which side you want. And it really doesn't matter because I'm not gluing this down because it's too pretty. I will clip it in my journal or send it in a Happy Mail. Okay, and then the little stamps simply sit inside here. Aren't they cute? Oh my gosh, I have so many ideas. You have no idea. So just with this one freebie, I haven't even printed the kit yet. Okay, so that's that. And I just put believe there. 
So let me show you how I constructed these two. So for the first one, I'll show you not using the paper because I did it with something I had already printed, okay, before I made it, just to make sure I was making it, you know, I wanted to make it the right way. So what you do is you have your paper like this, and of course it was one of these sheets, but I'm gonna make a different one. So I'm not gonna use this one, okay? So it was this. So you just turn it over like this. And for this one, I went over this way. And this is the vellum one, over this way. I tucked this under, this is the vellum. And then I tucked this up. So now I have a pocket here, a pocket here, pocket, uh, a pocket here, okay, and a pocket here. And all I did to get this was I took some glue, which I'll show you with this one. Well, no, I won't, because if I glue it, I can't show you the other way I made it. So what I did was I took some glue and I glued down this whole edge here okay and glued this closed and for this side I just glued right here and clipped it so that I could get my little piece in here okay so then that gave me this pocket the pocket behind it this little slide this pocket and this pocket that was the vellum one for the other one I did this. So I took the paper like this. I folded it. I folded it this way. Okay. And then I folded this down this way. All right. Uh, this is the paper one. Let me take everything out for you so you can see it. Okay, so it will make more sense to you. So it was double-sided. So I printed it on this paper first. Then I put it through my paper. Then I put it through my printer and I printed the gingham on the other side. And this is one of Angela's kits as well. Um, you know, she still has it in her shop. So, um, and you could use one of the backing sheets if you have the kit. Um, I haven't really looked to see if that gingham was in there. So for this one, I took it like this. So folded it this way, folded it this way. Okay. Then I folded this down and then I took this and I folded it back like this. Now this one I will go ahead and cut so I can show you what I did. So for this one, let me just fold it again to get a nice crease. This is just on the uh, 30 pound HP copy paper. This is on the linen paper. So it really doesn't matter. I mean, both are just as pretty. It comes out a little bit more vibrant, I believe. Speaking for myself, it comes out more vibrant on the um, this paper than it does on the linen paper. The linen has more of a subdued to it. The vellum, mm, I'm not really sure. Um, uh, well, yeah, the vellum is obviously because you can see through it is, you know, it's not as vibrant. So just giving you some ideas. So we'll put that back in there. So once you put something in there, it's almost as vibrant, if not more. Okay. So... 
then I just took this, I burnished it, you know, with my finger. Then I took my ruler and I took this piece because I didn't want to waste it. <laughs> this piece right here, okay? I didn't want to waste it. So I just tore it like this, okay? So then over here, now remember this is double-sided. If you didn't double-side it, you could then take this and simply glue it here, okay? If you wanted to. And then fold it up and you have this pocket, okay? And that's what you get. And then I just put Dear to Dream here and this is pulls out on this side. So what I would do is glue it up here, okay? And I have this pocket. Then I have this little pull out, right? And then you could put this here, but I put this piece on, I put that piece right here. See, that goes right here. But if you didn't double side it, it would be perfect to put this piece here, okay? Like that. And if you wanted to, you could actually fold it this way, right? Glue this here, and you would have a little secret, you know, writing space. Just don't glue it down. So you would do this. Sorry. Oh. You would go this way. You just wouldn't fold it up as much. And then you'd have this little secret writing space. Okay? So, that's what I did with that. So you could, that's, you know, an easy way to rectify if you didn't double-side it. You could do this. And then you could also, you know, take another scrap and put it in here if you wanted to, okay? And that way, you know, that would be covered as well if you didn't double-side it, all right? So that's how I made those two. Now, <laughs> stop me. Now I'm gonna make a different one, which will only take a second. Let me just put everything back in here so I don't misplace anything that I've already done. So I put that back in there. This goes behind it like this because it's just beautiful. I like to show it off. It's lavender. <laughs> so, and then this will go in here and in here and in here. Okay, I haven't lost any pieces, yay. All right, so those are those two. So for this one, I did not double-side it. So I'm gonna have to glue something on the back, which I think I have something cut already, which I thought I did. I do. So it will only take a few minutes. What time is it? Am I even running? Oh, okay. <gasps> oh. That would not have been good. Let me just get those papers that I was going to be using. It was, no, it wasn't that one. I thought I had one already cut to back it with because it's not double-sided and it needs to be. Okay, here we go. All my words are on my table next to me. Okay, so here we go. I am going to double side this simply by taking a different, you know, another paper and gluing it together. Okay, 
And I'm gonna use my Fabri-Tac because I just, I, I really don't like that glue stick. And it's just much easier for me to use this because I'm only going to actually go pretty much around the edges. And what I do, because I never, if I just glue it and try to put this down, it, it, I won't get it straight. So what I do is I cheat. <laughs> no, it's not cheating. It's just a way that I have found it much easier to glue things together so that it's straight. Okay, so I just clip it here and then I'll clip it. And it looks like I didn't cut it straight, but I can trim that up. That's not a problem. I might not even have to, you know, when I cut the white edges off. So now what I'll do is just back this off. And now I know I'll get it straight. Hold on one moment. And I wipe this off with my paper towel because it has some little scoopers on it. I could use my little bottle, but this is quicker. I'm staying. All right, got some on there. Okay, so I'm just going to go around the edge of this and not be too fussy. And why don't I have down my mat? So now I'll know, right, that when I go to put this down, it will be straight. Or at least it will go edge to edge. <laughs> and I'm just going to push it this way because I put the glue a little bit, you know, away from the edge. So I'm pushing it so that it will come towards this way without coming out. So this is a good way to glue something front to back. And also, you won't have any creases when you go to fold it. So if you put a lot of glue stick on this, you know, if you glue stick the whole thing, which you're wasting glue if you do that. So I'm just going to clip it here and then fold it back to where it's not glued and glue the rest. And then everything's straight. So I know that I need to pull it back a little bit further and I'm just going to do this right here and here and here and the good thing about the Fabri-Tac too is it dries kind of quick you can do this you don't need to but you can. That was silly. Where's my spatula? Doesn't matter. I'll just do this. I, I'll typically take my spatula in. Oh, it's right beside me in my cart. <laughs> oh dear. And no glue seepage, which is kind of nice. And then, now, you can also do this, right? And then wait, you know, until it dries. And then you can run an iron over it, and it will really seal it nice and tight. It reactivates the glue and seals it. But... We're not going to do that today. It's drying. I just want to make sure it's nice and dry before I start folding. I should get out my little um, brayer. It's okay. So, I hope I 
didn't get any on my desk. No. I don't know why I did that. So for this one, it's going to be a little bit different. Let's put my paper clips. I'll just put them here for now and put them away in a minute. Why is this off? Oh dear. I haven't used it in a few minutes, so. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so step one is gluing those two pieces together unless you've double-sided them. And if you've double-sided that, um, you could use cardstock, but paper will work as well. So what you're going to do is, I'll show you where I got this idea. I got this idea for myself. <laughs> I made this quite a while ago, quite a while ago. I don't even know. It was, I don't even know why I made it or what I made it for. Um, but that is a journaling card. It says, choose joy, grateful, thankful, blessed, choose joy. Be the change you want to see in the world. That's something from Angela. I always keep her labels in a separate, uh, that I don't, you know, that I won't use um, in the kit. And I've already cut them up. So then this is what it will look like. This is what I'm making, okay? So I had this in my idea box that I did not use. And um, this the lace flips up. I think I made this for a uh, gratitude, um, something Rach and Bella was doing. This is out of book page, quite obviously. And then on this side, we have this cutie patootie, which she's probably stuck down by now because like I said, it's very, it's pretty old, but she used to come out. And it says, sweet moments to treasure. And I just punched the edges of the book page and put the lace there. And let's see, and then the hearts. Remember the little things. And I put some, I think that's um, glossy accents. Embrace the possibilities. And then these cute little girls. And then I chalked her. So, yeah, and then I made some journaling cards and stitched around them. I, I, I honestly don't remember. I'm pretty sure it was for a day without laughter is a day wasted, choose joy, a joyful heart. I, it was something to do with gratitude or something like that. I don't remember. We had to make something in the group, and this is what I made. So when you, you know, when you make group projects and things like that, I just put them in my idea box and then I have them so I saw this and I thought oh how fun how fun to do one of these I haven't done one in a while I'm not going to do you know all of these things maybe another time but dear, it doesn't matter I'm just going to put this aside and show you how to make the envelope itself actually I think this slides back here it does okay so what we're going to do is I want this to be my front so I'm going to take this and I am going to what did I do I think I did this okay and then fold it so I brought the right edge of my eight and a half by 11 going horizontally. I'm not worried about the pattern or how it, how it will go. It doesn't matter. And then I think I folded it over. Let's see. Hmm. Let me see how I, real quick. I can, I'll be able to tell once I take these out, what I did. 
I did it this way. Okay, so I want to fold this over. I want to fold this this way, okay? And I want to... Um, no. I want to fold this this way. Yes, that's what I want to do. All right, let me just get this right to the edge here. All right, let me start over so you don't get confused. Here's your eight and a half by 11. It's going horizontal. Where's that vertical? Yes, horizontal. So just, I haven't made one of these in, probably since I made that one. So we want to just go to this point here. Yes, I think so. Hold this down. I think so. And we're going to wrap. No, oh, it's still not right. We want to go this up to here. Yes, yes. So yes, that's right. So you want to go all the way up to here. Then we want to, oh, wait a minute, maybe we go above that. That's right. I'm sorry. All right, let's start over. I'm so sorry. We're going to go up this way and we're going to go above this here. Okay. So we want two points right here. So we want to... Fold it like this. So you have a point here and a point here. And then just fold it. Okay? There we go. That's right. I know that's right. Okay. Then we want to... Um, yes. We want to bring this... Uh, okay. So we folded it this way, right? Then we're going to bring this side over here like so, right? I think so. And then before I fold that, I'm going to tuck this in here, like so. And then I'm going to bring this down. And this is 30 pound paper. So i um, thinking cardstock might be a little bit too hard for this. Well, maybe not because I did double it. I did print, you know, I did use the print. Uh, I glued. So you want to just make sure that that comes down and, and meets there before you do any of your folding here, okay? And then push that into this way and fold this side up. And then push this here, right? and take that and push that side up. Isn't that cute? That's adorable. And I love how the pattern worked in this. I really do. I love, love, love how that worked out. Isn't that so pretty? I really like how that worked out. So there's that little tiny edge there. Remember I said I had to trim it? I'm not going to, I'm going to ink it. So now you have all these pockets, how fun. Now let me just put this aside so we don't get confused. And we will fill this one. I'm just burnishing it, you know, with my fingers. I should probably use my bone folder, which would be much more helpful. Where is it? It's in my, I'll use this one.
Isn't that so pretty? Oh my gosh. The paper is just gorgeous. When I was in Vermont, you could not believe, I, I should show you pictures. The, li the lilacs, oh my gosh. Just huge trees and you know, I have been out of New England for a long time, but this is the first time in a long time I've been there in the spring. And boy, did I capture a lot of wonderful photos, which I will definitely be adding to my journal down the garden path because I did capture a lot of good, great photos. I stayed in a very sweet cabin um, on, a, on a river, actually, um, on the side of a mountain. It was glorious, and it was only about maybe, well, it was 17 miles from where my mom was, and um, a half an hour from her home. So, it worked out really well. I liked it a lot. I mean, I could have stayed it, you know, the double tree or the Hyatt or what have you, but it was just, I, you know, I said to my husband, I, I just want some peace. <laughs> you know, I spent a lot of time with mom and um, it was nice to get up early in the morning. I was up by 5, 30, 6 o'clock and out walking with my camera um, right away. You know, I put on my, my sweats and and went for my walks. One day I walked, the last day I was there, I walked almost four miles, um, you know, up the side of the mountain and down along the river. I got some great video as well. I wonder if I could upload those videos. There's no music or anything, so I, I probably could. So now I'm just gonna run along here with this, um, I think, what did I call it, Concord? Seedless preserves. I don't know why I want to call it Concord grape. I think there is a Concord grape, but I'm not sure. So in order to do, you know, to take care of that, I just inked it. And who would know? Nobody but us. And then I'll kind of just Take my ink so I can bring forward all that background that Angela painstakingly put in there because there is some words and you know how much I love bringing forward everything that's in the background and this is a great trick to do it. And it was purely by accident that I discovered this technique. I don't know if it's been done before, but in my mind and in my world, it has. <laughs> You know, somebody somewhere, I'm sure, thought of doing this with their inks. As long as you don't have a lot on your brush, go over it and just wash everything that she's put in the background and layered, watch it come forward. It's amazing, amazing. It's an amazing little technique. And there's not a lot of ink left on this brush. Obviously, you saw how much was on there. So, and it just brings everything forward and gives it almost a, oh, I don't know, just a deeper, richer. And like I said, if you are using gathered twigs or even a green, whatever, whatever you have on your brush that's not a lot, and test it. I've already tested this. I know how much is on here. So, just do that. Maybe put some in here. There's probably not a lot. There's probably not enough left to do this. But, yeah, there was. Let me just do this because there was some there so I'll have to finish it so just yeah see you can see that but it's not 
really making it look bad. It's, it's pretty. But there isn't a lot left. So when you do this, it just brings everything forward and does it just add a little bit of color here and there. Now, see what it did to this, the sort of like a peachy color. I do this in every video, I'm so sorry. I, I don't know why I just keep, you know, going over and being like a, a uh, broken record here. So there you go. So sweet, I love that. And then we will just pretend I'll take some things out of here and we'll pretend that we, you know, have already got all of our things printed. So then we have this pocket here and it's sort of like an origami. You could close this up if you wanted to. It's not necessary. You don't have to glue that up at all. So um, I've got this. I'll just take this one apart. This one. Sweet. No, I don't really want to cover up that flower. So I'm going to do that. And let's see. Um, let's do this for this back pocket. See, you've got a back pocket here. So we'll put that back here. That looks cute. How adorable. I think I'll move this over here a little bit, maybe. I just don't wanna cover this up, I love it. And um, possibly, let's see, if this isn't too tall, we could put this here. Oh my goodness. How sweet. Now is when you can do, you know, some embellishing with ribbons or words or what have you. But isn't that adorable? I want to show you one more thing. Um, you could even do this, okay? So instead of now having this little pullout on the side, you could make one for right here. And that is just the sweetest ever. I'm sorry, I do that all the time. I'm not bragging, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so what did I say I was gonna do? Oh, I'll show you. So now I wanna gift it. I wanna gift it to somebody. So what I would do is, look at all that I have. I mean, I could fill a journal already. So now what I would do is I would take this one or, let's see, what other color do I have here printed? I probably would take, I would take this one and I would simply get this so that it was in the middle. And you could do this with vellum. You could do it with anything you want. It's yours. But I just think that this might be a super idea. Because if I wanted to send this in Happy Mail, it would go in a flat rate, you know, envelope very easily. And you could do this part with vellum or tissue paper or tracing paper so that it was, you know, see through. But oh my gosh, it's so gorgeous. So gorgeous. So what I'm going to do is just take and take my glue. See, I can't stop. I just have to keep going and going and going and going. <laughs> and this is just a free, free digital. Look at everything I've already made with one free set. And I haven't even embellished it yet. Really. You know, I've added some words. But I haven't done any embellishing yet with ribbons or, or laces or trims. 
but then you just glue there, press it, right? And then I'm just going to make sure it's even here. There we go. And then I'm going to fold this up just a tad, not much. Where are we? I hope you stayed with me because this is so cute. Now I'm just going to take my scissors wherever I put those. Hello, scissors. I'm sorry. I will get a different pair. Oh. So I'm just going to now, I'm going to take this little bit of bulk out. Bye cutting this off the inside part along there. What a great gift. And like I said, this would fit, you know, in a flat rate envelope with no problem. I've sent them before, so. So there we go. Now you want to just snip that corner, snip that corner, and fold that little bit up. Okay, and then just run some glue here along this edge. Right, like that, and typically I'd wait for it to dry a little bit more, you know, by clipping it, but I'm not going to, and I am going to take it and just kind of do this a little bit. And I'm going to take the one that I made from vellum. Now, if I were going to do one for this, I'd probably do it in vellum or tracing paper. Okay? But since this one's vellum, I'm going to put it right in here. Okay? And then you could simply fold it back on itself. And I don't know what, run, run some washi tape or, um, how do I want to fold this? I think this way. No, I think I like it better this way. But you could run some washi tape on it or what have you. If you have an Etsy shop or you're selling things at a market uh, or something like that. How cute, what a great set that would be, you know? You could add, you know, some more stationery in the bag if you'd like, an envelope with something in it, with a card, um, you know, pretty much anything. And then, let's see, what do I have close by um, for some, let's see, no, uh, Let's see, uh, it's not really the right color. Well, it doesn't matter. I was going to just kind of, you know, tie it up, um, but you don't really need to. And what I would do too is probably take this added piece off, you know, and then clip your edges. 
but how sweet is that? And then the person opens it up and they have that sweet little gift inside. Like that. How sweet, how sweet, how sweet. And they have some tags to play with, some stationery, some cards, you know, what have you. Um, you could add more words. I mean, this you could add so much more to this. It's just pretty much, I mean, it's pretty empty. This one would fit nicely in here. Where's that other one? So, you know, you could definitely do this one, too, with the, uh, you know, with anything in it. Anything more? Oh, I think, oh, that is in there. That's right. So that would make a wonderful gift. Okay. Again, just place it in. Close it up. And possibly you could, you know, put two little grommets and some ribbon. That would be so sweet. So that's today's project. I'll leave the other one inside. I hope that you enjoyed that video. I certainly did. And I will be back again with another video, likely tomorrow. I have a couple in my camera. So until then, be well, be kind, stay sweet, and God bless. Love you all. Bye.